Okay, so this is the uh, this is the Maestro, the uh, GA1 RT, RT for reverb and tremolo. Um, the circuit is actually based on, if not identical to a Skylark, except this particular Skylark I've got here. Um, it's only just got a volume knob. It's um, still a one by eight and it is about five watts. Uh, it hasn't got a tremolo, so therefore the tubes are 12x7, 6v6 and 5y3. This one, obviously it's got a bigger cabinet for a start. It's still a one by eight. Um, because it has got a tremolo, uh, it's still got the 12AX7 for the preamp and the 5Y3GT for the rectifier, but because it's got trem, they use a tube called a ECL82. Um, and that tube, I believe, uh, is not only a power tube, but it also operates the tremolo as well. So just as, you know, general overall condition, this is the original handle. This is the original hardwired mahogany foot switch, which is pretty cool. Um, the logo is missing the M just here. But as for that, everything else is pretty cool. Uh, bear with me. Uh, the panel on the back's pretty nice. Um, not a lot of wear on that at all, really. Uh, obviously, this is for the Trent. This is for the volume of the amp, two inputs um, going down. So originally the amp was only built uh, in 1961. And for the first part of 1961, it would have came with a one by eight Al Nico. Towards the end of 61, they changed to uh, ceramics. Now this here, as you can see, is 220, so that's Jensen. The two here is 1962, and that's the 18th week. This is not the original speaker for this amp, although it is still period correct. So these, when they changed the ceramics, these were all black. Um, this obviously, uh, it's got a rib cone, um, ceramic C8R, it's got the original Jensen sticker. So to be fair, it should sound exactly the same as uh, the speaker that would have been in it. Um, in here, we've got the Gibbs original reverb tank. Uh, let's see if I can move some of this stuff aside. So yeah, it's backwards. Let's see if I can get a close up on that. Oh, not really. All right, apologies. Uh, but that says 1122, which is the Gibbs pan. And it says 6118, no, 6116. So that's the 16th week of 1961. Okay, so it's got the three part prong cord. Um, it's also got uh, these alligator clips. Now, these alligator clips are attached to the um, pan. And whereas on most reverb pans, if not all, they go from the pan to the um, transformer, the reverb transformer in the amp. Um, this reverb will not operate uh, for this amp meaning you can't play reverb through this amp. You can play tremolo, but you can't play reverb. We'll get to that in a minute, okay? But these are the alligator clips that um, are attached to the reverb pan. Now, originally, the uh, amp would have been, you would have uh, had this, which that is now off, but if you, Click it in, just click it in. Uh, it's a, um, the intensity is set, but obviously this is, so this is speed, slow and fast, obviously. And then click it off. Um, now what the guy's done, he's modified it slightly. 
um, and probably for a good reason, really, that if you are using this as a standalone reverb tank, then the reverb will always be on. So if you don't want the reverb to be on, you'd obviously set it to zero, but you would just turn up how much reverb you actually want. Good thing as well is the tremolo will also work as well as in, in the standalone reverb mode. So we'll get to that in a bit too. Um, but what he's done, he's modified it. So the tremolo doesn't activate the reverb. It actually activates the tremolo. So what he's done is he hasn't used it as a standalone reverb tank. He's used it purely for just obviously gigging and playing and whatnot. Um, and obviously, um, he's, he, he's just adjusted it so he can bring the tremolo in and out. The, this does need to be in for the uh, foot switch to work. You can do that. And in the past, that would have just come on. But he's obviously taken that out, the, the click to turn it on as such. And um, you'd probably set it where you wanted it, press it out and then, you know, bring it back in as you would do basically a pedal or something. So uh, that's that. That's that. It's got two inputs. Um, it's supposed to be about five watts. Um, again, it's got a bigger cabinet than the uh, this one here. So, um, you know, quite a big cabinet, actually. So it's fairly heavy-ish. Uh, yeah, I think that's about everything, really. Uh, as I said, the control panel's pretty clean, which is nice to see. Uh, I believe that when these were made, this would have been, uh, again, only for one year. I think it's about $149, which this was like, I don't know, $59. So this would have been kind of like, you know, for the smaller amps, uh, kind of like one of their top, top of the range jobbies. But uh, as I said, we'll play it on its own, see what it sounds like, and then I'll set it up as a standalone reverb tank. Okay, so I'm gonna play this through my Takai uh, Love Rock. Um, I've not got, I haven't got any pedals or anything plugged in. So it will just be clean. Um, you know, everything just comes from the amp. As I said, there will be no reverb because the reverb won't operate in this amp. It never did, like even from a uh, factory. Okay, so let's turn it on. It's uh, about nine o'clock. Just wait for it to kick in. Guitar was in tune, but you know, hey ho. Okay, the guy next door's out, actually, he's on holiday, so I'm going to turn up halfway. Thank you. 
chucking you know just because uh it came in an amp i gotta be honest i haven't used it uh, i'm you know i've got no reason to think it wouldn't work but uh if it doesn't just chuck it but it's a uh it's a vintage speaker uh eight ohm alnico looks like the original cone for whatever it is um i couldn't tell you what the code means i don't know if that's 61 or whether that's 58 um, but yeah, so, you know, got a choice of either the ceramic that's in there. This might make it a little bit softer. Uh, this will be a bit more aggressive, obviously the ceramic, but, uh, you know, it's a choice there if you want it. Uh, I can always just shove that in the box. Right. Well, use it as a standalone reverb now. Okay. So I've done that. Um, I've hooked the speaker terminal, the speaker alligator clip, sorry, to the speaker terminals on the other one. So basically what you do is you don't need to put anything in the back of this amp now. No input, no nothing. The alligator clips coming from the reverb pan come out red and the black and they attach to the speaker on the, in the other amp that you're using. They attach the speaker terminals and then the volume on this will operate how much reverb you want. So basically you've got like a wet, so the Maestro will be wet, the Skylark um, will be dry. So I'll turn it on. Hang on, bear with me, let's make sure it's all switched on. There we go. So we should just be getting the same to set Skylark. See, with a B 
be in a smaller cabinet as well. It's a bit more spanky, but obviously a bit more brighter. It's not as fuller sound. <laughs> We're going to start, uh, we're going to turn this on. So that again, monster has just been turned on. Okay, so I'm turning the maestro volume up to nine o'clock. Hear that spring. Messing with this, you know, um, this amp is still running just completely dry. So, you know, you put a pedal in front of it, blah, 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 you've got nothing, you know, faffing around with that core sound because then you've got this, the Maestro, which basically, not like a, you know, the, the big Fender Tantum and I had one, and uh, obviously it's still uh, blending with your original sound. This, the wet sound is coming out of the Maestro. So that speaker you've got in here, I mean, you can change the speaker out to whatever you want, if you want a more high-powered speaker or blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, it's an eight inch, so they're all gonna be fairly cheap, aren't they? Even the tank, the Gibbs tank, the Gibbs tank were used in all of the, uh, the, the Gibsons and also the Fenders at the time. But again, you know, you can put one of the latest, I don't know, Mojo ones in here or a, a surfy pan or whatnot for longer trails. Turn this up to ten. Turn the skylark up a bit. I mean, it's fucking loud, this is. something in the background just to give it a little bit of depth but it's not very um, at the forefront I mean you know again mess about with the power tube I've got the original tube that came with this Maestro amp it might be a stronger tube might be a more well balanced tube because uh, I'm presuming that there's two sides of it almost like a 1287 where one's running the power amp and the other one's obviously running the trim but uh, you know as I say it's, it's nice for a bit of I think like Joe Bonamassa says like he uses one doesn't he like just uh, it's just a little bit of something extra. This is without it. But this is, uh, I mean, to be fair, like a, a little, tiny little five watt amp. Thank 
And now we're going to turn it up. I mean, it's got a bit of hum now, but that's because I've turned it up to uh, turn that to like two, two o'clock. In the day, um, in the lot like in the west, uh, there was a bridge built of redwood. Big storm broke the bridge. There was a guy who worked for Gibson who used to go out sourcing the woods. 
uh, there was a deal done. Gibson bought all the, you know, basically all the, the direct bridge, dried it all out, um, made cabinets out of it. So, uh, you know, that's what I like as well, is where all the other ones were using pine and everything. You know, again, you know, Gibson just doing something a little bit different. Some people like it, some people don't, but it is what it is. Noise. <sighs>